Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everybody. We are going to pull back the curtains today and learn what goes on in the minds of an author. Books are becoming popular once again. I was walking somewhere the other day. I saw somebody who couldn't have been more than 22 sitting there actually reading a book, <laughs> not, not on a screen. It was so refreshing, a tangible in your hand book. How is that done? What goes on in the mind of a, of a writer, of an author? How do they find the inspiration? Uh, is there a thing called writer's block? Heard about that uh, forever. Does that, does that happen? We're going to talk with somebody who is behind a wonderful publishing company, NFB Publishing, and he helps authors, uh, even non-professional authors, find their way to creativity and getting a book published from start to finish. And he's by, back with us. He's our professional of the year. Mark Pogosinski is with us. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Good. How are you today? I am good. I'm, I'm intrigued here because... Uh, from time to time, all of us have to write an email. Maybe you want it to be creative. Sometimes we have to write stuff that uh, has to be a little more detailed. That's just the basic stuff. Let's go right there. How do you find the inspiration to be creative? Uh, that's a great, again, loaded question. Great question. Um, I, I feel that all everybody, all, every, every person has a creative outlet or something in, inside them that makes them want to create something, whether it's um, doodling while you're in a meeting or a flights of fancy during the day when you have an, uh, a daydream. Okay. That's an important outlet. I think um, creativity and whether it's writing, painting, what have you makes us more human, makes us more, I think, empathetic, sympathetic to those around us when we use our imaginations to put ourselves in different shoes. So I think, Everyone has the base potential to do that. It just requires a little time and patience. Um, if you are a creative person or you've been told, oh, that was very creative, well, why not try something? Okay, yeah, Get out a easel and start painting and see what comes up or get out your pad and pen and start writing and see what, what, what you can come up with. And it's a great way to get out emotions, whether they're good or bad. Um, an ability to make something that is beyond yourself. And I think that's mm -hmm. an important little aspect to it. Um, almost therapy. Um, you know, there's art therapy, there's music therapy. Art is and can be used to exorcise all the bad emotions that you may be feeling during the day. But there's a there's an opportunity to take that someplace grander. You know, you write um, a poem and then you're like, you know what, I like it. Um, I'm going to keep writing. And who knows, you may put together a collection and you might want to share that. And that's where like a publisher or an editor comes in to help foster that and to help teach it. I mean, a lot of people think, oh, I'm beyond it. I'm whatever, 35, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. No, nope, it's never too late. It's never too late to go back and try something new, especially in the creative mm. arts. Do you feel that when it comes to a book, a story, whatever it is, that part of your inspiration is you feel that it needs to be told. You've mm. got this drive like, I, I believe that people need to, to read this because it's going to inspire, it's going to teach, it's going to do something. Uh, uh, well, the grand idea of art is it betters humanity in some way. You know, that yeah. idea, it's uh, possibly naive on my part, but hopefully that is the point to it. It's not to denigrate or hurt somebody it is to help whomever become better to advance in whatever they may be doing and um the creative outlet is part of that even if it's just doodling even if it's just writing down a couple lines that's important and then if again if you want to take that for, further there's an outlet for that and even if it's not you creating are you like you said the twenty two year old guy reading a book or gal reading a book? Um, when I, I teach and when I teach literature or teach reading, like uh, you're bringing your own baggage to whatever you read. And when you're reading something, the voice in your head, a uh, great question: Is it the author's? Is it yours? Mm. Are you doing character voices in your head. Who told you how to do that? 
Why do you think that person speaks that way if it's not you know, stated in the book? So even experiencing art is a creative outlet. And especially with reading, hmm. there's a great, that's a great question. Whose voice is in your head when you read? It's got to be wow. somebody's. Um, is it your hmm. the authors? Whose is it? Wow. You're making me think here because it kind of, you turn the table. <laughs> so in that the person who's experienced the, the work of art, the book, whatever it might be, you're interpreting it in a creative way, your own, whatever way that might be. Like you said, I'm hearing a certain voice. I'm hearing my own voice. I'm here. It switches around in terms of the narrative. So I never thought of it that way. You know, we, we do it in our own creative way, interpreting whatever we're experiencing. And I think people do it without realizing it or not yeah. appreciating it. Um, you even see someone like the the person read the book. In your mind, the story starts to form. Like, why are they reading that book? What uh, you know? What's happening the, during that day? And then you can find yourself as you walk away from that person. You've created an entire life for someone you have no idea who that person is, and that your creation is as real as the reality of that person. Um, we do that when we read things, when we appreciate things, when we uh, even see a movie or watch a TV show, we bring our own ideas to it. A character resonates with you because that character is going through something you went through and you're like, mm. all right, this character now has a deeper meaning for me. And, you know, you get real upset when the show gets canceled the next week and you're like, ah, and I'll, I'll never know what happened to that character because that character became something more to me. And that's a great thing about art, about um, appreciating other people's artistic endeavors. You know, it, I'm I'm reading a uh, nonfiction book, sort of an inspirational type book, self help, whatever you want to call it. And before I started reading, I read like two pages. I'm like, hmm, who is this guy? So I googled, I researched him, and I see a picture of him. And he he wrote it many years ago, but it still stands strong, very popular book. And I hear him, I hear his voice because I became familiar with him. And I'm wondering if, if that was the right thing to do, or should I just have let it go and just read it and whatever um, narrative pops in my head, let it be. Uh, what are your thoughts? Should we look into those things before we read a piece of work? So again, the teacher in me would say, whatever you did was the right thing for you. Did that book become, become more meaningful because you could put an image to the author? And maybe yeah. you heard his voice on YouTube or what have you. Oh, that, well, no, I'm just going to say, never did. All okay. I did was, I, you know, I looked on a wiki, I learned a little bit about him. Oh, interesting. He went from this to this and he overcame these challenges. And, uh, you know, he's born in this country. That's basically about it. But I feel reading his story because he includes his story at least in the beginning of the book and then it's on to how you can make change in your life i feel like i i, I know him a little bit based on the research and the connection is not is it is a real connection yeah because it's real in your mind you may never meet this person but for those couple moments when you're reading you're connected you're connected to the material connected to the author and having never heard his voice, the voice in your head as you're reading, mm. it, did you give him a voice? Did you give him an accent? Um, did you start adding details to him that may or may not be real, but in, they become real to you as you read this book? And that's the great thing about reading. Okay? You don't have someone speaking to you in a voice that is obvious. So the your brain starts working. And I think that's why, you know, again, teacher reading is more important than watching. You can also watch the movie based on the book, but in, when you're reading the book, the voices I think are fascinating. Yeah. Because who came up with that voice when you're reading this book? Do you, does he have an accent? Does he have a thick voice, a light voice? Um, when you're reading the pages, do you think he's talking to you? Okay. And and hopefully, you know, it, it's not like you're having a, a mental breakdown where you're hearing voices. Right. Right. We do. Right. When you when you read something, you do hear voices because they're in your head. And you decide what they sound like. Is he when you're reading that book? Is he yelling at you like, "Oh my goodness, I I should I should be doing more with my life," or is he uh, like a father figure, like it's going to be all right? But this is what you should be doing. Yeah. 
and even emphasis on certain words as you read. That, that's magical. You know, I, I, I guess it goes back to the creativity because you are being creative. You are essentially, you're creating those voices in your head. And you might have started to answer the question that I didn't even get to ask yet in that, what do you think about audiobooks? Because now that takes that all away. Uh, a good audio, a, a good reader makes the book a little bit better because they will do voices. And then you ask, well, as you're listening to it, that's not the voice I think. And you can actually start having like a little conversation in your head. Like, I understand why they're doing that voice, but that's not how I see it. And then you might actually go back and look at the pages of the book and like, okay, they're emphasizing the wrong words. And there's part, that's part of it, right? That's part of you adding to the book because the book doesn't exist without the reader. Okay? It's just paper on a shelf. Right. The reader makes it come alive. And if you have, if you listen to audio books, because the time, your time requires it, I know people who will find specific readers. They won't even care about what the book is about. They will find the reader because they enjoy that voice. And then never having met this person, probably never seen them, they become a friend mm. and someone you can trust because you know the voice. And again, the creativity of you bringing your own baggage to that is important. Yeah. It's like having a companion in your Absolutely. car or on the next to you on the treadmill. Um, do you feel that listening to an audio book is the same as, as reading the book? in what you get from it? Or do you think that, in, in your opinion, that we're missing out if we listen to the audiobook? And there's a reason for doing that. You know, you might be time, have time constraints. Some people read the book and then then listen to the audiobook. But what what do you, you, you feel like we're, we're missing out on something if we listen to the audio version of it? For me personally, I prefer to read. Um, because I do enjoy those voices in my head that came out wrong, but I do enjoy that. I, uh, whatever it may be, like I'm reading a book, a nonfiction history book about the Crusades. Every time a character pops up, I, I use my imagination and give them a, a voice and something. And if that's given to me, I feel I lose something. But it's sometimes it, you just don't have the time. And mm. experiencing the book is important. And hopefully you get a good reader when you're listening to the audio book and it's an enjoyable process. And I, if it works out well, maybe you go back and look at the book, but I would never tell anyone not to use audio books for me personally. I like reading because again, the voices in my head, um, they're comforting. That's I get it. <laughs> and I find this fascinating, uh, getting your perspective based on what you do and also how you help others write books. Um, Let's go the writer's block. Have you ever been in those situations where you're writing something or you've worked with somebody and I got nothing, I'm dry. I got to take another day, week. <laughs> nothing's, nothing's coming up. Fiction is difficult. Okay, again, you're creating something from nothing. Yes. And not trying to just borrow from what you've read or, or seen. So that that can be tough. So um, a couple of ones that I've used in the past um, a, a nice, easy one. You take a piece of paper, you number know, one through 20, and you come up with the most ridiculous words you can think of, yeah. just the words. And then you go back, you know what, I'm going to write a two page story where I'm going to use every one of these words. And it gets the creative mind flowing. It's almost like a modified Mad Libs. And that helps because it takes your mind off your project and it gives you, it's silly. And maybe you, you're writing something really serious and you may you write a comedy piece. Um, the first rule for writing and I tell this to everybody, um, is amuse yourself. If you're not amused by your own writing, there's a good chance no one else will be. Mm. You can tell when someone's slogging through a book when you read it. You're know, like, oh, this is a low point. They had trouble getting through this part. And it comes across in, in the book. So as long as you enjoy wow. what you're writing, the process should be fine. But a writer's block's real. I like the list idea. And I think I mentioned once before, Take a movie or TV show that you found disappointing, that you were like, no, that's everything's wrong. Rewrite yeah. it because you have a plot, you have characters, you have a setting, you have everything you need. It just takes you to rewrite it. And I think that's a nice way to do it, too, because, again, you're out of your own world. You're in someone else's and it helps you edit your own work when you edit someone else's. Never 
thought of it that way. You know, you, you watch a movie, you read a book. That ending was horrible. Why did they do that? And then just change it up. Be even great to give it to a friend. Yeah, we watched this together. What do you think of this? The Mad Lib idea, I think, is is great. It's almost like improv. And maybe if you give yourself a time limit, you know, you have five minutes, come up with something now. And I'm going to say the two letters. AI can come into play to give you that, even that list. Give me a list of words that uh, connect to camping, whatever it might be. And now, now you're ready to go. I per, like the more random the words, the better, because it forces you to do more creative work. Mm, oh, well, true. Yeah, I'm yeah. just I'm throwing hypothetical stuff out there. Uh, do you do you encounter this with people that, uh, as a publisher? When, do they tell you, you know, oh, Mark, I'm stuck. <laughs> what do I do? And then uh, sometimes just talking it through, like what's that character? And then talking to someone about your project, they're going to offer their own opinions, um, whatever. And maybe I don't like this character. I think this character should be a villain. I think this character needs to be killed off, um, um, whatever it may be. And then you're like shocked. You know what? No, that's my main character. And then you start thinking, should I? kill my my main character off should this be like a different sort of arrangement in terms of time a non-linear storyline or plot line i start with the death and work backwards and that will give you a whole new perspective on it and i think mm. you when you take someone else's work okay because uh, uh people have mentioned this multiple times in the last episode of game of thrones oh, i was furious well you've watched that entire series if you have writer's block Rewrite the last five minutes of that show. Rewrite last 10 minutes. And it helps you get out your anger about the show that you didn't care for. But it also allows you to see the development of those characters. Because you don't have to develop them. You know the development. Where do you want to take them? Where do you, what do you want to see? Did you always have a, you know, a, a soft spot for a villain? Well, let's redeem them. How would you redeem that character? And I think that's a great way to go about your writer's block. And then I, that's one of the ones I, I encourage people to use often or simply talking about it with somebody, someone you trust, obviously. Do, do you feel a lot of times we're, we get stuck in a uh, chronological rut? Like you just said, you know, somebody is uh, passes away. Start with that and work your way back as opposed to what led to that and, you know, story over. Well, not only your storytelling is incredibly uh, popular and works on many levels. And mm -hmm. think about those shows or books that start off with a scene and then they go back and explain how you got there. It's filling in the gaps. And again, you as the reader, you're trying to put it together too. It's like that mystery. And I think it draws the audience into it. So it's a nice way to go about it. Um, doesn't work for everybody. Some people like this linear start here and here. Sure. But there are so many variations. And again, just trying different things, um, exercising your imagination is a good way to put it and trying to do that every so often, um, wherever it may be. And I think it's helpful to a lot of people in it. And I think few and fewer people are doing it. And that's, that's sad. It's kind of interesting that you, you brought up that you might be reading a book and there's a low point in the book and you're thinking to yourself, yeah, they're, they're, they're struggling with this scene. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, and it's like, I went to a concert, a tribute show uh, last weekend. Uh, it was a, a Queen tribute band. And I've seen them before a couple of years ago. Uh, amazing. They're, they've been doing it for decades. And it wasn't as good. And then I found out the lead singer was sick. And I noticed, let that hot out. He's sweating like a pig. What's going on up there? And a couple of notes, you know, it still was good, but it wasn't as good. So he was struggling. So I guess, we, you know, we all, even as a writer, sometimes struggle. And you can, I think you can tell when like things are found in, in terms of like TV or movies or uh, even a book where someone you like uh, James Patterson, you know, like you've been locked in Patterson for years and then a like, book comes out, you're like, that one was not the best. And it's okay to think that way. It's okay to be critical of the things that you enjoy. Mm. And then you can take that criticism and use it in your own creativity. Do you, somebody like him, James Patterson, do you, you feel that he's got people writing for him that he's not sitting there and doing it every, yeah. every single novel, you know, word for word for word, like he's got a staff and they're, you know, they're all working on it together. 
I, I think it's a known secret that he uses ghost riders from time to time. And again, if you're pumping out those books and, and you're popular and, and it's uh, very lucrative, you can't come up with every idea all the time. Mm. And, you know, writers, uh, I forget the, the guy who wrote Shutter Island. I saw him once give a, a lecture and he was hilarious and he, he was very self-deprecating. Um, and he said, there's only like five basic plot lines ever. And I just do variations of those five. And Dennis Lehane is his name. And um, he was great. He's like, this is what Shutter Island was about. This is where I got the ideas from. This is where I kind of borrowed things. And for someone to be like that respected and that well-renowned as an author, to just be like a human being and say, it's a struggle for me sometimes. I, I, it was great. And I, I think more people need to hear that. Mm. <laughs> I think it's cool. You know, in, in the end, who cares how it was done unless, as long as it was enjoyable. However, you know, we look back at things like, I don't know if you remember in the 80s, toward the late 80s, Millie Vanilli, uh, yeah. you know, they weren't really singing. They made us all believe that they were. Um, we were uneasy about that. Wasn't cool. Me personally hearing this, James Pat, I mean, I, I assume it. They've got other people working on it. But you don't know that when it's a singer, it, it, it's not their voice or you, 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 you know, something gets exposed. I don't know why that bothers me, but <laughs> somebody goes writing for James Patterson. Yeah, hey, whatever business, whatever. I, again, I think it's a known secret that he can't do every book where the Millie Vanilli is like, this is us. And they, you know, accepted the awards for it. And then it, right. it all came out. And I don't think Patterson hides it one way or the other. And it's like, this is how it has to be for me to work on the books I can. And then I need help from time to time. Well, I guess there's a difference here. Millie Vanilli had one album, you know, maybe I don't even think they made it to two, but whatever, you know, call it a, you know, three hits, uh, three big ones. Um, Patterson decades of books and books, but, you know, it's like somebody like, um, you know, Billy Joel coming forward and, and it's exposed. That wasn't really him singing after all these years. I grew up listening to that. Maybe it's, maybe that's the difference that we, now, for somebody like Patterson, all those ideas, all those books that how would he even be able to do that? You know, when when does he sleep? And again, he's in, employing writers, too. So, well, then, yes. Yeah. And I yeah. Think they, uh, give him a good chance to go out because he gives you this formula, this outline for his books. And then you're all right. I can use my own creative talents, but I, I'll fill it. I fit it in within this construct. Gotcha. Millie, Millie put out multiple albums. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> Interesting way to look at all of this. Um, if somebody is is thinking about writing or publishing their own book, you take them, and we talked on previous podcasts, by the hand, right through the entire process, right down to registering with the Library of Congress, right down to the cover, right down to all of that. How do we, uh, how do we find you, Mark? So nfbpublishing.com is the website, a small form to fill out, and then uh, we'll, we can start the process. And again, I encourage anyone who's ever wanted to write a book. The only thing keeping you back is you and, you know, your lack of time, probably. Sure. Yeah. Great talking with you today. And uh, the voices in your head. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Uh, appreciate it. We'll talk soon. Okay, Mark. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's it's crucial. 
Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.